Hi, this is the Sock Monkey Guy, and you're listening to Inspirado Projecto. Thank you so much, Martin Schmidt, a.k.a. the Sock Monkey Guy, for that extraordinary introduction. By the way, folks, um, I will put into the show description here the links to the interviews I've had with Martin over the over the uh well recently and then also a year before before that all these were all conducted at the monterey golden state theater i'll put the links to the descriptions in there so you can you can follow the rabbit hole there um i'll even put the interviews with cristo rapolo who's the local ufo ufologist i'll put i'll put those uh, links in the description now as for the the meat of of this matter here, of this episode, I'm very excited to present to you an interview with my elementary school teacher, Mrs. Dargatz, from fourth grade at Carroll Stream Elementary in Illinois. <clears throat> and you'll hear some other people talking in the background, too. Um, well, so first, let me just set it up real fast. Mrs. Dargatz came out to see Yachtly Crew play. We were playing at the Palms in Las Vegas. By the way, if if you don't know who Yachtly Crew is, check out YachtlyCrew.com. We've got YouTube videos. Um, we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, <clears throat> everywhere. And we have residency over there at uh, the Palms. And so Mrs. Dargatz came out with Renee Easton, my elementary school friend from way back then. She she came out with her husband, Jason. Uh, Mrs. Dargatz, Jane Dargatz, came out with her husband, Ken. My dad Chuck was there, his girlfriend Chris, my girlfriend Kristen was there. It was it was a wonderful affair of extraordinary people. And uh, it, it, it felt like the ending of, like of uh, Wizard of Oz when she wakes up, she goes, you were there, you were there, you were there. I was in this dreamland place and here was, it, it was like, uh, and you'll hear, you'll hear us joke about it in the interview where it's like, this is your life. So... I am so excited to present this to you. Also, we have a fun fact by Henry D. Horse. Later on, Man Behind the Machine uh, leaves a message. And also, Mickey Dolenz from the Monkees stops by to say hi. So without further ado, and definitely without further a don't, I present to you the latest episode of Inspirato Projecto. But first, Henry D. Horse with a fun fact. Here's your fun fact. Cats are the sleepiest of all mammals. They spend 16 hours of each day sleeping. With that in mind, a 7-year-old cat has only been awake for two years of its life. Stay tuned to Inspirato Projecto for more fun facts. So I'm going to record you if you don't mind, okay? That's fine, yep. So... I can't believe I'm sitting here with Jane Darkads. Was so? Were you our teacher for a few grades, or was it just one grade? Oh my I gosh, she's opening up her year. book. I, I love this. Oh, you're in this one, though. I had you. At, I think I just had you in fourth. Oh my gosh! But that was in, in kindergarten. Oh my gosh! This class I had two years because I had them in third, and then I had them in fourth, and they went to our wedding. Oh my gosh. I love it. Oh my gosh. Is this your year? I have to look to see. No, that's the year after you, I think. Oh my gosh. Yeah, scrapbook the year full of you. your youth. Yeah. This is amazing this to see this. This is your life. I love it. This is your life. That might be the year before. No. Oh, there's there Mr. You. Ballinger. There you are. Oh my gosh, here's Renee. Look at little Renee. No. It's little nice. Renee. Oh my Where's god, you? Tommy Lally. Yep. No way, Kenny Walters. Yep. That's what I remember, Kenny Walters. Oh my god, Kent Prane. I can't Matt Graver. Yep. What the heck? Yep, Brian's in there. Oh there oh, I am. Weasel. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Oh my gosh, Deb, Debbie McClelland. Yep. I can't believe Dana Pincus. What the heck? I can't and, believe And it. most of these kids are uh, kids I'm uh, Facebook friends with. Tommy Senate. Look at this target. It's so crazy to see this, Dad. Uh oh. Yeah, Brian uh, Hayes. That kid was a terror. I texted him this morning. Oh, you did? Oh my gosh. 
He was a terror. That kid would not leave me alone. Yeah, I heard that. She told me about that. Oh my gosh, Jason Carpenter. Oh my gosh. Yep. Oh my gosh. Lindy Schlifke. Oh my gosh, Sarah Staples. Millie Etchins. Millie Etchins. I can't. Jogger. Oh my gosh, Jogger. Yes. What was what was Bob's last name? D'Angelo. Sometimes you call him Robert. Oh really, Robert D'Angelo. Oh yes. Yep. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Oh my gosh. I. Oh, there's Angie McQueen. Yeah. That was me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Joanne Lang. You, you, you stepped on her lunchbox. Oh, that was Angie McQueen, actually. I secretly liked her, but I didn't want anybody to you know that. You did? Because yeah. no one else liked her. I know, that's she why. She was odd. I know, because she ate glue and she, she, you know, ate her own boogers yeah, and, you know, people made fun and, of her. Or she'd pick her nose wow. and Oh my gosh. But I, I, you liked her? Good I for secretly you. liked her, but I didn't want anyone Jason to know. Turek? Jason Turek. Jason Facebook friend. Um, Facebook friend. Oh yes, Matt Graver. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you're... Oh yes, Amy. Amy was in the spelling bee with me. We both got. We were both. She was first place, and I was. I was. Third she was place advanced a year when she was in kindergarten. Oh my gosh. Yep. Oh my gosh. Erin DeShiel. Oh my gosh. I had a sister later. Oh my gosh. Sherry, what was her last name again? Oh, Cheryl. I don't know. I probably have it somewhere. Oh my gosh. Sh Sherry. Uh, Tom Yosenik was so kind to her. Oh, yeah, Tom Yosenik. And you probably know this, he's a tattoo artist in Texas. Yeah, yeah. I taught him how to Texas draw. Now? I taught him how to draw. Yeah, and he's, 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 he's got... He's got he, yes. He, I think he did one for um, uh, Bulls player, Outlandish. Oh, my gosh, a Bulls player. Oh, my gosh, what's his name? Uh, uh, who's the Bulls? Dennis Rodman. Rodman, he did Rodman's tattoo. Oh my gosh, yeah. I can't believe this. This is so great to see this blast from the past. Oh my gosh. So this is... Look, look. at that, there's the classroom. So that was the year I had my baby. Oh so my gosh. So 39 oh, years ago. That's right, I remember when you had your baby. That's right. Yep. So you notice, okay, that's the class before you. So oh all gosh. of these are, you know, look at all the photographs that I have oh of all gosh. my classes before. Oh and my gosh. Lots of photographs and stuff oh beforehand. My gosh. And then I had my baby, or babies after that. So then they, when you guys went to fifth grade, I went to kindergarten. Oh. And then you guys came along as, as fifth grade buddies. Uh, no, not on this one, on the zoo trip. So this is a kindergarten zoo trip, oh. or a kindergarten farm trip. Oh, this is great. But then when we went to the zoo, you guys were kindergarten buddies. Oh, no way. No way. <laughs> Look at, there I am. That's crazy. So we all dressed in color coding. Oh my God, I so love it. So we could it. find each other. Oh, what a brilliant idea. What a brilliant yeah, idea. Here. here you are, here. Oh my, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Trip on. That's crazy. Look at it. Oh, no way. Yep. I can't believe it. Oh my gosh. So I had... Um, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Did I have... Did I have Dignan? No. Because I had Tracy Dignan <laughs> Oh yeah, Tracy Dignan. But I had a brother earlier. So here she is here. So I'm Facebook friends with Yeah, Dignan, Dignan, yeah. What was this... Dignan. He's named after his dad, uh, and he went into the military. Oh my gosh! So it's so fun keeping up with everybody on Facebook. I mean, how did you remember all these names? I mean, that must be crazy, you know, teaching all these kids throughout the years because and to remember their names. You, they become part of your life. They're totally part of your life. And when they come back and visit you, and I'm like, oh, I remember that you, your, your sister had a baby that year. You became an uncle that year. Like, how do you remember that? I because love that. they're part of your life. They're, they're. They're everything to you. That is so fascinating. Yeah, they're everything to you. I, yeah. It's so crazy because I substitute taught for nine years. You did? Yeah, and these kids will come up to me because like, they change so much. I mean, as you well know, Boys we, faces from these little kids. Boys especially, they become much more triangular. They're hard to recognize. Girls are a little bit easier. It, and it's tricky because they'll be like, Mr. Glenn Denon, and I'll go, uh, you know, and I feel bad because I don't remember them. So I'm fascinated to, to know that you remember all of us when we were little, little kids. And stuff about them and... Because it's important. It's just, uh, yeah, it's, it's everything. There's so many. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of kids you must have taught throughout the years. I didn't count it. Probably a thousand. Thousand. 
I would think a thousand. And you remember all those kids. Some you remember more than others for various <laughs> reasons. Yeah. Some of them are good. Some of them are not as good. For various reasons. When we reconnected, I remembered her different colored eyes. Oh, yes. Yes. You are remembered because you, you left school on a regular basis. Oh, yes. Because you would go out from modeling. Oh, yeah, for my or, auditions. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> it's right. Yeah. For the auditions. Yep. 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 It was great. And my mom always said, don't tell anyone. Like, don't get a big head. You know, don't, like, so I, I was just like, I was just like, I never let anybody know anything. So you just quietly walked out of class? Yeah, no. until I was on the back of the cereal box. Then everybody knew. And I'm like, <laughs> ah, the gig is up, you know. It's not me. <laughs> Nobody looks at cereal boxes anymore. No. That's what we did when we ate our cereal. That's right, that's right. That's right, that's right. So, they, so Mr. Ballinger... Dad, dad and mom. I, I see him. Dad and mom went to school with him. You did. They went to school with him. Get too far. There he is. You got. Yeah, they went to high school with. And so I remember that first day, mom was flipping out when she went in there. She's like, Bob. And I'm like, What? Mom knows the, 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 the principal. That's right. That's right. And I think as a result of that, I got I got away with a lot of stuff. I think because uh, well, probably like our my dog our dog Toffee. Le- like went to the school to Carol Stream School looking for me one time. Aww. Uh, yeah, you, to- Toffee was looking for me at school. Yeah, yeah Toffee. Okay. And then another time uh, we got a new swing set in the backyard, and I just ditched. I just left school one day. Oh my god! To go play on the swing set. <laughs> yeah. There he is, Mr. Ballinger. Oh my gosh! I I can't believe that is so oh, do you great. Remember that, that Chicago friends. field trip? Oh my I god, do. wait, did we go to the Sears Tower? Yes. yes. I remember that, yes. yes. I was terrified I looking out that window. Right? That yep. high up? Yep. That was so fun. Oh my gosh. Those that was field so trips special. were a lot of work, but they were so worth it. They were so worth it. Well, it's Friday, uh, Friday afternoon time doing our thing. Fat dot day. Fat dot day. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh. We went on the hikes. Okay, so we the hike. Oh, no, we the made the soap. Oh. Yeah, I made the soap. We oh, oh the that's right. I remember the way soap. Oh, yes, I, I remember that now. They're like, you have to put it in a little bit at a time. So, like, oh, they so crazy. Tie dye. Yep, we did tie dye. Oh, yeah, that's right. Did we make pretzels. We made pretzels. Oh. And we made a Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, yeah. We did the big okay. Thanksgiving so, dinner. Do you remember Brian? Uh, yeah, Brian, Brian. Brian Reynolds. Oh, Brian Reynolds. Oh, yeah, Brian. Brian Reynolds. had a lot of anger issues. I don't know the, yeah. the root of them, but and and we didn't have the services we have today that would have helped him deal with that. And um, I I felt like I never got through to him. And yet Thank that you. Thanksgiving dinner, I brought my whole kitchen with me to school. And we had different teams. You know, you're on the mashed potato team. You're on the. Was that mashed potatoes? Were you? Mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. You're on the turkey team. You're on the stuffing team. You're on the cranberry team. Oh my gosh. And so, you know, I bring all the stuff for it. And different moms are doing the different stations. And it was just one giant headache. By the end of the day, I just, I was done. And he was one of, I think, Millie and he rode the bus. And so he goes off to the bus. He comes tearing back. I'm like, Brian, what'd you forget? And he goes, he was the only kid who said thank you. Oh, of all oh my God. The, the troubled kids, you know, he was a troubled kid, and he's the only kid that recognized how much work that was. Oh, my God. how meaningful that was. And it was like. That is so sweet. That is so sweet. I'll remember that forever. What did you say? We talked the first time that we got together. We talked about how what I was going through when I had moved there. And all the things that all these different kids were going through that she had no recollection of, no oh idea that it was even going on. And I said, you have, you saved my life when I moved there. Oh, my god! Because we literally had picked up and moved overnight when I showed up in Carroll Street. Oh, my god! And I told her, I said, you, you saved my life and you had absolutely no idea. Oh, I love this. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. We have no idea how much we affect the people. You know, and then like, look at how far, how many and, years have passed, and, we're and you still talk about, about our, our wonderful Brian picking on you. Huh. Yeah, I, Brian has said the same thing. He said, "You are the only." His wife asked me, "So what? You what was different about Brian? Why did you love Brian?" Because he said, 
you are the only teacher that loved me and showed me that you believed in me. Oh my in gosh. All my years of teaching, or oh my, all my years of school. Oh I'm my like, gosh. So she's asking me what, what, what was different about Brian and I'm like, the only thing I did differently is I never looked at what all the other teachers said. I didn't want to know. Oh, interesting. And I mean, well, no, I don't want to say that on this podcast, but Brian had a medical issue that made him different. Uh-huh. And so, I don't know. I, and I had seen him in third grade and I thought, oh, please don't put him on my class list. Please don't put him on my <laughs> class list. And there's Brian. So yeah. he's on my class list. And he told me, he had some, you wouldn't know it. His family looked like, I saw this the other day. His family looked like the all-American family. They wow. good put together family. Mom was preteo president, you know, oh. and she ran the copies for all the teachers. I mean, it was just like this, this is like the perfect family. Wow! But at home, he was not treated well. Oh no! So I would guess, finding out what I just found out about you and he, he was taking on his aggression on other he was. people. Yeah. And um, yeah, that makes sense. I, but I had no idea. And he had a lot of struggles in his further school years and did not behave well and blah, blah, blah. I had no idea. No idea. And so... It's crazy how we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. And now he's a pastor. So I went to his church in Colorado. Whoa. And he starts out... He's getting to the sermon part of his service. He starts out and he says, you know when you're going to do something and like your mom or your aunt or somebody is there and... And so you're all nervous and you don't want to mess it up. And he goes, my fourth grade teacher is here. <laughs> I love it. And she's standing right there. And I'm like, <laughs> I and he it. chokes up and he said, and he said what he said to me. She is the only teacher that ever loved me and showed that. Oh my God. That she, that I could believe and believed in me. I love that. I love that. I love that. Yeah. So little did you realize that no, not at all. his future self would be not at all. You know, that's, and that's I loved so my career. Though. I loved my career. It was the best. That's oh why gosh. this this little scrapbook that no one on the podcast can see oh my gosh. captures so so this. much. So so oh my much. Gosh, I love this. And then when I went on to teach kindergarten, you got forty five kids. You got twice as many. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. And fun stories from all of them. I mean, so what? It, what? When did you move? To, when did you start working at J Stream School? That would have been after. Oh well, actually, the, Carol Stream was so crowded that they moved all the kid, all the fourth graders from Western Trails and Spalding School. They were renting a school in Get Glen Ellen oh. to oh. J Stream while all the fifth and sixth graders went up to Dirksen. Do you remember that? I went to Dirksen. You yes, went to Dirksen. I was just going to bring up Dirksen. Dirksen Dragon. Yeah, really? Tom, Tom Yosenik and I. Tom oh Yosenik and I designed the Dirksen Dragon. Uh-huh. Well, the I whole class. We all we all added. It's so crazy. Wow. It was so fun. Well, so while you guys were up there, I was at, at Jay after some maternity leave or another. And um, then after that, I had another maternity leave and I came back in sixth grade. Oh. at J Stream. And I fought them on that. I'm like, no, I belong in elementary, but it was a really oh, good so they fit. pushed you over there. Mm-hmm. That's how that works. So you cannot but choose Bob, where you want to... Bob Ballinger did. And he recognized that my skill set, my humor, my sarcasm um, would fit. And I, I love sixth grade. My other language, I'm bilingual. <laughs> <laughs> bilingual. Yeah. And it, it worked really well. I loved middle school. And then I went on to become a middle school principal. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Where? where? In, in Sycamore. Oh. That's how I got to be in my hometown. No more 15. What was a 35 minute commute on a good day, typically 40 minutes, became up to a 50 minute commute. As, oh. as the Chicago sprawl went towards St. Charles. Oh. More stoplights, more traffic. Oh my gosh. So. And my kids were little, and they were, and then they were getting older, and they were in sports and stuff. So that enabled me to be more participatory in the family. So, so I mean, how does that feel to you to, to to see these kids and know what they were at the time that they were, and and then to see them grow into what they've grown into? I mean, can you like think back? You're like, oh my gosh, 
that totally makes sense that this person would be doing this because I saw the elements of them doing that. Or and I'm sure there's sometimes like, what the heck? Who would have thought they would have done this? Amen to that. <laughs> Super surprising because there are some like like the Brian that we were talking about. Uh, yes, he yes. went on to become a cop. Whoa. He went from being a cop to being a pastor, back to being a cop to being a pastor. Oh my gosh. That's a weird trajectory. Um, you, an artist, not surprising. Um, I have a couple that I know that have PhDs that I probably wouldn't have picked to be in a PhD. Not that they didn't have the capability, but I just, surprising. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know of any that are doctors. There are more than one that are pastors. It's just cool to see where they are because you never knew. And how I know, Facebook. Isn't that wonderful? Because way back wonderful. then we were like, oh my gosh, we're never going to see our old friends ever again. Nobody could have ever predicted something right. like Facebook. Right. And now it's like a retroactive thing now. Because yeah. then you, you find one person and they're like, oh my gosh, no way. And then they get you into the, finding the other people. And this and particular, I know several that are firefighters or police officers, many that are teachers. And there's one that's a teacher who I had in kindergarten who never spoke. She never spoke. Oh my gosh. And she's a teacher. I'm oh, like, wow. In fact, it, it was like the spring, and the kids at her table asked her if she had a brother, and she said, yes. And they went, she talked. She talked. Oh, my gosh. started, she talked. And I'm like, okay, let's not do this. She'll never yes. speak again if you do that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It was like a and momentous a occasion. The fact she said one word, and I know. it flipped everybody out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Did you have a brother? Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I, that's that's really cool. People say, oh, Facebook. I don't know. That's what I love most about Facebook is connecting with other students. Me too. Me too. The fact you get connected with these people. Yep. and. Yep. Oh, my gosh. So, 35 and a half years. Three of those years, I, I was able to stay home with my children, who were all born, like, right before. Like in August, August, September 1st. So I had a full year off with my children. And being a teacher was wonderful to be a mom because you get two weeks at Christmas, a week at spring, and at the time, pretty much a holiday every month. Oh, wow. Because you got Labor Day and Columbus Day, and um, you got Veterans Day, then you got Thanksgiving, then you got Christmas break, then you got Martin Luther King Day, then you got President's Day, then you got Casimir Pulaski Day in Illinois. Oh, that's right. That's Remember right. Yeah, yes, Casimir Pulaski. We like our holidays. And then, then you had to go all the way to Memorial Day after spring break. Oh, my gosh. But it was great. I mean, that's 13 holidays. That's two weeks for any other person in the real world. That's two weeks off. So it was wonderful. We could spend a lot of time together. So with, um, like, how... I feel like teachers were a lot more able to kind of craft um, kind of what they want to do in their classroom. And then as time went on, then things changed in a strange way. What, what point did things kind of uh, tip over into a different... No child left behind. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. And in the cur core curriculum... And so what I find when I connect with my students, they, they remember Fat Dot, they remember the hikes, they remember, and all of those you could tie to curriculum. I could tie Fat Dot. You know, when we make, made M&M um, &M cookies, there's a lot of measurement, there's a lot of following directions, there's a lot of cooperative learning. You know, there's a lot that I could say, this is tied to, mm -hmm. um, definitely to curriculum things, but you can't take time for that. So. What like Dana Pincus? When I connected with her, she goes, "I remember, and I've taught my own kids about the albedo rate. The albedo rate is oh the reflection of snow of the light off of the snow." Oh my gosh! Do, do you have any recall of that oh my in gosh. science? It's amazing. It's different. What sticks with different people? Oh yes. We're learning about Lewis and Clark when we did our hike. Maybe. Yeah. So it was like the whole. Wait, and so that was the one when your dad was on there and we, when we hiked through there, huh? Yeah, we left at 6 a.m. And then, I remember that famous they line. Us off. Like, moms we don't know. could still drive. Where are, we? where are you? Because we were lost. Yeah. And I think it was Brian who went to my dad and was like, Mr. World, where are we? And he goes, I know right where we are. We are not lost. And you went up to him and said, you know where we are? He goes, yes, we are right here. I don't know where <laughs> here is, but we are right here. We are right here. <laughs> 
Well, remember we had scouts appointed that were supposed to go ahead. We were that was so the fun. Whole pioneer thing. Yeah. See, that's what saved you when you that's got lost. Why I am, why I am. Yeah. That was so fun, and everybody thought it was so cool because we were back by noon and you got to go home. Wow. Yeah. And we thought we were out in the middle of it, nowhere. We and did. We, were, like, we had no the frame of reference because I don't think you told us where we were going to be, right? I think you kept it a secret. You got dropped off in Winfield, and we walked back along the DuPage River. Oh, that's what it was. That's what it was. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I just remember we came across a bridge that was out. I remember I, there was such an interesting mystery right there. Like, why is the bridge out? What happened here? And I think some of us climbed down into the ravine there to see what was going on, you know? <laughs> see if we could find a troll or something. Were you at Carroll Stream when Mr. Kemp came as principal? I think so. Uh, I, huh. He didn't want to permit us to do the, the hike because I was pregnant. Oh, jeez. That wouldn't fly today. <laughs> that wouldn't fly to it. And I didn't take a hike that year because my class was not, they would not conform to directions. Uh. You can't take, you know, remember when we climbed straight up that hill, went across three tracks and back down? Oh. That's dangerous. And if you're not going to listen to me, I'm not having kids run over by a train. So. I remember we walked across like a pond on a very thin. I, I actually fell into the water. <laughs> there was like a very small uh, limb that all the kids were just going across. And we had these wispy oh, yeah, yeah. branches to hold on yeah, to. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. I lost my footing See, I on could, a kerplunk. I, couldn't, I probably couldn't, I couldn't do that today either. Oh my God. It would all have to be Dude, defined. Just, there was just so much more freedom, huh, back then. Yep. So I now am on a board for a, uh, a one-room schoolhouse out in Sycamore. And I did a lot of research so that I could be a docent for it and go out to organizations and then also be a docent when kids come. And all the research I did about one-room school education was really interesting because there are a lot of buzzwords in education now that you could go, yeah, they were doing that 100 years ago. They were doing that 100 years ago. And yet, the whole difference was that teacher was in the parents, the, 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 the kids and the parents were in that teacher's palm. Whatever the teacher said went. Mm. If that child misbehaved, they got it double at home. And you have my total support. That is very rare today. Very rare. And that changed over the course of my career. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean it's completely gone, but it's much different. When I was substitute teaching, I was substitute teaching junior high and high school kids, mostly junior high. And um, I was very pleased that mo uh, the particular schools that I was teaching at, they could really get my humor. And I was so happy. I was yeah. so happy about it. So I have very dry humor. And they were like, they were like, oh my God, he's totally joking. This is a hilarious joke he's giving me right now. And it was great because these kids, a lot of them were very, very receptive. And I, but I realized that the, the they were, they were, they were like the whole year was spent um, uh, learn like um, educating themselves on this thing called the C A H S E E C -A -H -S -E -E, the Cassie test or something. Yeah, for California probably. Yeah, and but like that's what the whole year was geared oh, towards. Like, and it was like, yeah, but what about all this other cool stuff? And it just felt like icky, and it felt like just kind of strange and contrived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's interesting not interesting to hear from your point of view from before that happened, you know? Yep. And how that that turned into that. Yeah. Because that must have been I mean, did you feel like you just had you had such a tight leash on you to, to do anything? You know, teachers need to be held accountable. They should. Like at any job. You need to you need to know that you're you're producing what you need to be producing, but at the same time, that can't be the be all end all. Mm -hmm. Because we're working with children. And you have to make those connections. Yeah. I remember when Bob Ballinger interviewed me, and I'm a brand new college grad, I'm 21 years old, and he says, how important is it that the children like their teacher? In my infinite, minuscule wisdom, I said, it's important, but it can't be the, the end of what you're doing. Right, right. And I, as a middle school principal, I saw a lot of middle school new teachers trying to be their friend. Oh. You can't do that. Oh. But at the same time, if you don't build that relationship, 
you won't get anywhere with them. Right, right. So I gave a wishy-washy interview question answer, which I would stand by today. It's a, it's very important. You have to build that relationship. And you know, most teachers start out the year like, okay, here are our rules. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this, we're gonna do this. As I evolved over the years, I let the kids make the rules. Oh, that's cool. They know what they are. But it needed to be their classroom. And we had we had that's great because in a sense they're holding themselves accountable. We had a democratic classroom in that everyone got a consequence, but if Renee forgot her homework every day and Jason forgot his homework for the first time because he left his backpack on the bus and he was freaking out over it, and she's like, eh, I never, I don't care, I don't do my homework. That's going to be a whole different, he gets a consequence. Yeah. But it's going to be completely different. And the kids got it. Because fair is not always equal. Yeah. Oh, that's a great way of putting it. They totally got it. And and they helped develop what those... So we had a menu of consequences instead of here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. They totally got it. Wow. That's crazy. So it was very cool. Is that champagne? Good cranberry? Oh, I thought he was drinking champagne. Oh, it's cranberry. He's just so sweet. this is for you. I found it on the floor behind your Oh my chair. gosh. So find a penny, pick it up all day long. You'll have good luck. And it was heads up. I love this. Oh my gosh. This is a wonderful sign. Yeah. She just found this on the ground. It was heads up. Find a penny, pick it up all day. You have good luck. She found that behind my chair. Aww. That's fantastic. What year is it? Thank you. It's a year you're born, you know guarantee a whole year ago. Oh. oh my gosh. Oh my god. You know what? My eyesight, particularly my right eye, is a little different these days. <laughs> uh, oh, you, you, you must be in your late 20s. <laughs> when your eyes change. Yeah. Oh my gosh, a reader. It's 1974. Wait, you can read it? Yeah. Oh, Hi. that's crazy. I'm 73, but I'll still take a whole I'm year. 74. Good luck. Oh my gosh. How cool is that? That's so cool. And this is all good luck, the fact that this all happened. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So this weekend, seeing you, seeing her, yesterday went and saw a student who was in my very first class ever. Wow. Which at Carroll Stream, they took two large third grades and split them into three. Oh. Mid-year. Oh, oh, I remember that. I remember that. Wait, I remember being in a classroom where they split it. In a cla- they split up the, the, the classroom, and then two teachers, so you must- with, with one teacher from over here would then teach part of this, and then, no, this right? Was, well, they did else? do that, that, that. was that. fifth grade here, because I remember that. Oh. Like oh. Yeah. oh. This was, Powell, and then oh, yeah. This was in 1980, so that would have been oh. before your time. You would have been in, what year did I have you? I don't remember. But anyway. Yes, over here. So. May I have some more coffee as well, please? Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you need some food, dude. Oh, yeah. So, um, this thank guy... You. Thank you. ...had moved to Arizona. They thought there was a job opportunity out there, and they moved back. So now he was considered a new student, even though he'd been in the school. Oh. So he got put in my class. Oh. And um, he'd been not a good student. He had... Um, not but it, he I didn't know this he said he was a behavior problem do you remember Paddington Bear I do I remember when I, we used to take home Paddington Bear correct so I introduced Paddington Bear to them and he decided he was gonna straighten up and he was gonna be the first one to take home Paddington Bear oh my god so that Friday of the first week he dressed up he had straightened up all week once I told them about Paddington and by God, he was the first one to take home Paddington. And there were only 21 kids, so he also was the last one to take home Paddington. And when we reconnected on Facebook, he told me all of that. Oh my gosh. And so I sent him the first book of the Paddington Bear series by Michael Bond. Oh, I love it. And um, he has since, he's a firefighter and he suffered some really bad health issues. He's really not well at all. Oh no. So I saw him two years ago when we were here. And um, he can last about three hours, you know, being up and out. Otherwise, he's usually in bed. Oh, boy. It's serious. Oh, boy. Um, and so 
Um, we saw him yesterday. He now his son lives with him. Delightful young man and his wife, and he has a baby now. So oh. we got to play with the baby. And, um, we talked for a long, long time, and he he talks about again the life changing that changed the trajectory of his life. That oh, that's so exciting! In a half year, and I'm a brand new teacher that doesn't know what she's yeah. doing. Sure. I'm like. I, I had no idea. I love that. I love that. I, no love that. Yeah, I, sound, I sound boastful. I don't mean to be. I don't, I'm not. No, you're not boastful. I think you're very excited about the fact that you've seen these kids. You see the seed and the, and the tree that they've grown into. And so after we leave here, I'm seeing another student that I had in oh my gosh. 82, 83. So this will be a four-student weekend. That is incredible. It's super and cool. And you talked to Brian, so kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Every time I go to Denver, I, you see him. I see him and his family. Oh, my gosh. And I feel like that if I put that on Facebook, that's kind of like, I wonder if all the other ones are going, what about me? <laughs> what about me? That's all I can do. You were the <laughs> Right? That's it. That's it. Yep. I love that. That's so great that you're reconnecting with these students. Oh, I love so it. Cool. People are like, that's so cool that you're doing that. And I'm like, yeah. I'm sure other teachers feel the same way. I'm sure they do. I'm sure they do. If, I mean, when you look at these, this photo album and you see all of these photographs of what we were doing, and then I have my own family and you don't see as many photographs, but they, they are your life. And my husband taught too, and now he taught middle school, and they're kind of like, <laughs> they don't want to talk to the hand. You're not... I can't be, I can't be, you can't be close to your middle school teachers. Oh, right, That's right. not cool. But you can build relationships with them, too. They, just kind of on the sly. Yeah, I can't, can't let them know I like that teacher. You know, because they have to be cool. Oh, my gosh. Can I take a, a couple of these photos of, of Absolutely. this? Absolutely. Oh, my gosh. There's such a good, such good photos in here. All of these ones of our field trips and the, let's see here, oh my gosh, this is so exciting, this is so exciting. What a fun it's thing, mismatch here. day, it's great. Oh, see, all that stuff is fun. Hey, there you are. Oh, yes. If you want, I can take them out. Oh, so no oh, thank you. This works for me, because I just need I was like, you're awfully quiet, man. Probably. Write that down. Write that down. Stop it. I'm going to try one of the things. Uh, it's incredible. This is great. Fun. Well, that's kindergarten fun. Oh, this is our classroom? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, let me get that. Oh, my gosh, that's good. How oh, fun. Wow. This is so exciting. Oh, there we go. Is that Sarah? Is that Sarah Cisco or not? No. Oh, Sarah Staples. That's Sarah Staples. Her mom, I think, is the one who made that quilt. Oh, that's great. The in the middle, and you guys all signed a square. Sarah Staples always remind me of like one of the Charlie Brown characters. Yeah. Um, what's her name? Sally. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I'm sorry about your mom. Oh, thank you so much. I, I meant to grab a card before I came. Oh, no, that's so sweet of you. She... So if you, if you send me your contact information. Yeah, I think it's stuck on the phone. One of the little pop-up doodads. Oh, I love this. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Gosh, that's tricky. Um, I guess are you, are you my couch dad surfing? Is. <laughs> oh. It's it's strange to like 
Like I just had my 23 year anniversary of moving out to California on February 23rd, 2023. On 223, 2023, my 23 year anniversary of, of living in California. What part of California? It was uh, North Hollywood. Okay. So it's like the uh, the valley, the valley area. But um, my um, so dad lives in Florida, and. Um, my brother and um, his kids live in, um, oh yeah. You like this, oh you have some. Yes, this is so great. Thank you. It takes a very steady hand. It does. Oh, you're in this one too, dude. Oh, oh, there we go, there we go. Look at Keith Ladenorth. There he is. Yes. <laughs> Look at him with his aviator glasses. Gosh, this is so great. Oh my gosh. Close up to that one. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. Wow. It's funny, like I zoned in on all the yellow. Oh yeah. There's Amy Gunz's mom. Oh wow! Still in touch with her. Wow. Remember we were there was big little train cars. I remember all of us. Wait, was it Cowsley's petting zoo? Did we go to Cowsley's or no? There was like train cars, and we were all in the train cars with our heads sticking out. I have the picture somewhere. My Brookwood Zoo. Because it wouldn't have been Chicago. I'll have to see if I can find it. That's all kindergarten. It's incredible. Yes. Incredible. It's kind of fun to see how some of these, some of these, um, you might recognize some of these. This is all. I don't know. That's that's Elsie Johnson. Some are these all teachers. These are all. These are all teachers. You might recognize some of the teachers. Oh my some of them not. Gosh, maybe. No, this is pretty late. Oh yeah, that's ninety eight. Ninety five, ninety six. No, you might recognize some of them. Um, oh yeah, some of them must have stuck around. I bet. Let's see. Mrs. Con oh, Mrs. Lutz says to say hi to you. Oh my gosh, that's great. I remember her. I remember yep. her. I told her I was going to see you. She said, oh, say hi for me. That's crazy. Oh, these are uh, teachers. These are teachers. I remember. Here, I'll show you the pictures that I took of. No. So there I am on a, on a field trip. How cute are you? You're and then, so cute. Oh yeah, that's, oh yeah, that's the same... I don't know if I'm in this one. This is all sick of her. Hers was that Carol Stringer guy. She was my fifth grade teacher. No, I don't think I was in there. Okay, there's this one. Oh my gosh, you're so, you look the same. That's so crazy. You're like the same. Thank you, baby. And I also wonder what the food is doing. Wow. Oh, look at this one. Oh yeah, that was my class. There I am, little kid. Hey. Look at, look at, look at how. Yeah, like the man Look at this. Oh my gosh. Was she our sixth grade teacher? Yes. Was she at over at Dorkson? That was our sixth grade teacher. Was, oh. was Zicky? Oh, oh, interesting. She she made me wear my gum on my nose because I would chew gum during class. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my gum on my nose because I always got busted chewing gum during class. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wear your gum on your nose. It's kind of fun to look at my different hairstyles. And it is. It's great. My weight go up and down. It's so amazing to see the, the evolution. It would be all over the news if that teacher did that to that student. Right? They, yeah. They, they would blow it out of teacher. Isn't that silly? By putting gum on their nose. Yeah, yeah. Well, those were the days. This is when I was at J Stream doing fourth grade. I love it. Those Halloween, I remember the Halloween parades and uh, 
across element, you know, I'm across kills. Dice that one year, they couldn't get through the doors every time we met. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> That's funny. It's incredible, dice. That's the only thing I remember about the Halloween parade. That was great. So you, were, you were asking if we had, if we had uh, a young man that had bigger cheeks because he had asthma. Yeah. I don't think wait, so. wait, 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 wait. They moved out here somewhere. He was only there for a very short time, and he was He's on. not in this composite. Did he? Did he die? Was that the little kid that died? I don't know. I think he moved. Because he died of asthma or like pneumonia. He did end up passing away once they got out here. I He's don't not know. I think he was in our fourth grade class. I think he was. Really? But he was only there for a very short time, and they moved him out here because it was so bad, and maybe he ended up passing away. Like, I want to say he went to Colorado or Arizona or, oh. you know, but I couldn't remember his name. I just remember his face. Yeah, I got my blue name here today. Yeah, I can't remember his name either. I remember the kid. I remember he, if that's the same kid that you were talking about, I remember he, it was Millie Etchins. He's like, so much, like, the kids had to be, like, partnered up with other kids. And Millie Etchins didn't have a partner. And I remember he was my partner. He's like, Poor Millie don't have a partner. Poor Millie don't have a partner. And I just was laughing so hard. He and I just, every time we saw Millie, we're like, poor Millie don't have a partner. Oh my it. gosh, it was so funny. But I, for, I forgot what his name was, but I love that guy. Do you remember that Millie's dad died that year? Oh I my gosh. Oh my gosh. So when I came back after having my baby, you know, I was so freaked out that, well, not freaked out, but here you have fourth graders who should not experience death. Mm. And my baby died, and her dad died in that time that I was off on my leave. Oh my gosh. So I came back after two and a half weeks of, even though I had a cesarean section, and I was there for one day before spring break, so I could explain to you guys what happened, because 10 year olds shouldn't have to wonder why, you know, what if they their mom got pregnant? They're gonna think their mom's baby is gonna die. And Millie's dad shouldn't, I don't remember what, I don't know exactly what happened with him. So I read the book, The Fall of Freddie the Leaf by Leo, Leo Battaglia. Mm. And that's kind of like explaining how a leaf falls off the tree and it's a natural occurrence mm. and it was going to be okay. And he was okay once he fell off. He was deathly afraid of, not deathly afraid, of falling off this tree, but it ended up being okay and I explained all the medical stuff that happened to Brittany and um, we talked through I think Millie was there we talked through um, her dad dying and that was unusual and so, because I, I mean we needed to make that a teachable moment so that kids could know yes it's okay I remember oh, oh yes yes thank you do you I'd like to read it again. I don't think I have a copy of it. Um, when we get back to the house, I'll pull it out. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Yeah, because that book was huge for me, so I still have a copy. Miss Dargatz, I'm going to get some more food. You should. It was wonderful. It was Maybe. wonderful interviewing you. Thank you thank so you. Let me, for so much for letting me travel down memory lane with you and learn cool. about this stuff. That's very cool. It was such an honor. Thank you. I'll let you know when this is up. On, yeah, do. Uh, it'll be all over the everywhere, all over the world. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, people in France will be listening to you talk about this. Yeah, maybe even Germany. That was just mind blowing to me. That was just so exciting to be able to talk to Mrs. Dargatz again. Learn about the history of when we were kids, hearing it from this adult perspective, looking through her big books. So amazing. It was such an awesome opportunity. The fact that her and Ken and Renee and Jason and my dad and Chris and Kristen, the fact that they were all out there and getting to, I mean, it's just amazing. A goulash. I think my next episode is going to be an interview I had with a, an Uber driver on my way to O'Hare Airport from Carroll Stream, Illinois. Carroll Stream, Illinois is, uh, where Mrs. Dargatz taught me, where Jane Dargatz taught me. 
Killstream Elementary. And um, the interview, the next one I'm going to upload, takes place April 17th, the day after my mom's memorial out there. And as I've said in past episodes, I'll, I'll get more into that. I, I've, got, I've got interviews with my mom. I've got uh, interviews with the doctors who are checking out my mom. So uh, that will be... Those will be more episodes, but the next one will be this really fascinating interview that I had with an Uber driver who is a computer engineer, and uh, it was it's really intriguing to hear the kind of stuff that he's discovered as a computer engineer in the whole artificial, artificial intelligence realm, so stay tuned for that. Up next, real quick, uh, we, we, we got Man Behind the Machine calling in. He's got something to say. And uh, and then uh, Mickey Dolenz closes out the show. So thank you so much for... for stick around, stick around. See what, see, see, see what these guys got to say. It's Brad Oates Man here. I want to know more about those monthly meetings in Hollywood on the UFOs. He sent me a message, and I want to let you know that I just did an episode on E.T. EBEs and crop circles. Hey, do you have any experience with crop circles or talking about with anybody? Man behind the machine, thank you so much for that great question. I do not go to those UFO meetings anymore. Those were put on by Steve Bassett from the Paradigm Research Group, PRG. Um, those used to happen once a month. I had those meetings out there in Marina Del Rey. And you had to either be vouched for by someone else who had been there before these were the rules these were the rules you had to be vouched for by someone who had been there before uh two <clears throat> two you had to have an interest in ufos extraterrestrials you know either by having sightings contact or just being you know just being a geek about them and then the third thing was you had to be in the industry in the movie industry in some way and um I had an extraordinary time. I think one. T- I think what I'll do is I'll do an entire episode about my my um, investigations and educations at those secret UFO meetings. As for your second question concerning crop circles, I met a man named John Lundberg. Uh, he. He and his buddies interviewed me for the documentary Kaufman Lives. I hope that comes out someday. Oh, I hope that comes out someday. He got a lot of great interviews, a lot of great friends of Andy Kaufman's, some of which have passed on already. Alan Abel, for instance, is no longer with us. Alan Abel, the man who faked his death over the weekend, got his obituary into the, uh, I think it was the New York Times. And after a couple days, he's like, surprise, I'm still alive. But that's, that's what inspired Andy Kaufman to fake his death. Um, John Lundberg put that documentary together, and John Lundberg is a professional crop circle maker. There are he was inspired by these other crop circle makers. I, I can't I cannot remember their names at this moment, but um, John has been responsible for some of the ones, some of the big ones that they've seen um, out there in the world, and. Uh, he and his buddies do not take credit for it. They never take credit for it. It's an anonymous thing. And I was just blown away just finding out how easy it is to make crop circles. I don't know how many people he's taught it to, but he told me if you ever come out, if you ever come out to England, you are going to experience something very, very special. He said he's, he's um, retired at this point. But sometimes companies will pay him to then go out and make crop circles for, like, publicity stunts and stuff. So there you have it, man behind the machine. I hope that answers your question. And um, thank you, Henry D. Horse. Thank you, Martin Schmidt. Thank you so much, Jane Dargatz. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for being a part of this. And thank you, Mickey Dolans, for closing out the show. Stay tuned for our next episode. I believe it's going to have that uh, Uber driver interview. Um, the computer engineer. Um, we find a lot of interesting commonalities between the way the c- uh, computers work and the way that humans work. It's it's uh, it's going to be a fun one. All right, 
Take care. Thanks for listening to Inspirato Projecto. Hi, it's Mickey Dolans here. You're listening to Inspirato Projecto.